all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee.
chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
Jesus says, I lay down my life for the sheep. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. About a year and a half ago, soon after I had moved to Gottagen Street, I was at home reading one night when I heard what I thought were fireworks being set off just down the street. The next day, of course, I learned that these were the sounds of gunshots. Thankfully, no one was hurt that night. There were news reports about it. But they were brief and easy to miss. And it took some searching for me to find yesterday, for me to find out that gun violence in the United States has apparently continued at the same levels, if not slightly higher, as before the lockdown and the pandemic. Well, no doubt the events of last weekend will make it impossible for us to ignore these kinds of stories in the future. For perhaps you were like me when you first heard the news Saturday night that there were reports of gun violence in northern Nova Scotia. I was somewhat concerned, but it wasn't until the next afternoon as I began to hear more details that the reality and the horror of what had happened really began to occur to me. May the Lord make us more attentive to the pain and suffering of the world. May that at least be one outcome of the recent violence and death. And if you wonder where God is in the midst of this pain and suffering and death, I can only think to say this that God sent his only begotten Son into the world to die for our sins and to rise from the dead, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is God's response to the horror and the violence and the suffering and the evil of the world. God is not indifferent to it. In today's gospel, we hear of the hireling who is indifferent, the hireling who abandons his flock when trouble comes. But Jesus is not a hireling. He is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. This image of the Good Shepherd is one of the oldest and most ancient in the history of the Church, and it is a powerful image. It comes to us from antiquity, where we learn that being a shepherd is a prerequisite for being a good ruler. In Plato's Republic, for instance, Socrates repeatedly uses shepherding as an allegory by which to evaluate those in authority, because he says, shepherding is concerned to provide only what is best for that which it is set over. It is only fitting, therefore, that Moses, who leads his people through the desert towards the Promised Land, was found shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire and called him into service. And mighty King David was a young shepherd boy when Saul first anointed him as one of his armor bearers to fight against the mighty Goliath. But there is more to the image of the good shepherd than good leadership. In the ancient world, the gods of the underworld were often shepherds. In ancient Egypt, for instance, Osiris, god of the afterlife, was often depicted with a shepherd's crook as he guided the dead through the underworld. And in ancient Greece, Hermes, who also guided souls through the underworld, was often shown carrying a lamb or a ram in his arms or on his shoulders. 
And there was, of course, Orpheus, the son of Apollo, who made his own trip into Hades in the hope of retrieving Eurydice, his lost love. Orpheus's enchanting music was known to tame wild animals, and so he was frequently depicted holding his lyre, surrounded by animals. All of these ancient images were gathered up by the early Christians, who often depicted our Lord as a young shepherd, much like young Orpheus, carrying a lamb on his shoulders in the midst of a garden with stars overhead. And for the first three centuries of the church, this image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd was the predominant image far more prevalent than depictions of Jesus on the cross, for instance. It was a deeply powerful image for those early Christians. For just like those earlier ancient peoples, it signified God's providential care over the whole created order, crossing every boundary. Christ the Good Shepherd is the noble ruler of the whole created order both the living and the dead. I know my sheep and am known of mine, Jesus says in today's Gospel, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. Beneath the city of Rome are the ancient catacombs, a series of secret tunnels and caves where the ancient Etruscans and Romans and later the Christians sometimes buried their dead. And during times of violence and persecution, the early Christians often retreated to the catacombs where they would hold worship in secret. They adorned the catacombs and the tombs of their loved ones with images of Christ the Good Shepherd and the Garden of Eden. And indeed, you'll find in the front of this morning's bulletin a depiction of one of those early images. You see, in the midst of tremendous suffering, violence, and death, the image of the Good Shepherd, surrounded by his creation in the midst of his creation, was a reminder to those early Christians of their Savior's loving care for them that they were members of his flock. And as Jesus says only a few passages on from this week's Gospel, he says of his sheep, they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, in the midst of our own times of trial and suffering and death, may the image of Christ, our Good Shepherd, be a source of comfort, consolation, and strength. For Jesus lays down his life out of love for his sheep. He is not indifferent to the suffering of the world. And this stands against all the suffering and the pain and the evil and assures us that there is more to the story than the ruin in which we now find ourselves. On Easter Day, we were filled with joy when we found the tomb empty and the body gone. Jesus told us this would happen, that he would lay down his life for the sheep. And now we must believe, for if this old, old story is true, we have nothing to fear. As we sang in the Easter sequence, happy they who hear the witness, Mary's word believing above the tales of doubt and deceiving. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia.
close with Psalm 23. A prayer for those who died this past weekend, for those who are injured, for all who mourn, and for this world which is filled with so much suffering. The Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, can I lack nothing? He shall feed me in a green pasture and lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. He shall restore my soul and bring me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou shalt prepare a table before me in the presence of them that trouble me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely thy loving kindness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength, and honour and glory and blessing.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. The Holy Communion is offered this day to the praise and glory of Almighty God, and in thanksgiving for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Pray that he might lead us and his whole creation to streams of living water. Let us carry with us in our hearts this day the suffering of this world. Let us place that suffering before our Lord. Let us remember especially this day those who continue to suffer as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us pray especially for the sick and for the dying for all doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers. The Lord protect them. Let us also pray this day for all who suffer violence of any kind in this world, praying for peace. Let us remember and give thanks for all who serve in Her Majesty's armed forces. Let's give thanks this day for all police officers, all first responders, for the RCMP, and all those who work in law enforcement and keep us safe. And let us remember those who have died as a result of the recent shootings in northern Nova Scotia remembering their family and friends in mourning. We share in their grief and we carry their grief to the Lord as we remember Tom Bagley, Kristen Beaton, Jane and Greg Blair, Peter and Joy Bond, Corey Ellison, Gina Gullett, Lillian Hislop, Don Madsen and Frank Ulenkin, Lisa McCauley, Sean McLeod and Alana Jenkins, Heather O'Brien, Jolene Oliver, Aaron Tuck, and daughter Emily Tuck, Constable Heidi Stevenson, Elizabeth Joanne Thomas and John Zoll, and Joey Weber. And let us remember this day the faithful departed in Christ, praying especially for Roberta Matthews, Barry Jackson, Freeman Purchase. Holly Gushi, Bill Naftel, Hubert Rose, Thomas Shulmans, Micah Zaisha Rostail, Joyce McCullough, Sophia Grandy, Paul Patrickman, Robert Lockham, and Hubert Morgan. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. May light of shine upon them. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church here in earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, 
that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Ronald, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, in sorrow, in need, sickness, or any other adversity. We bring especially James, Bruce, Bruce, Vernon, Eric, Jennifer, Peter, Wanda, Helen, Justin, Marie, Debbie, Max, David, Barbara, Patricia, Johanna, Lynn, and the Salma family, the family of Taruka, Justin, David, Brenda, Helen, Peter, Armand, Evelyn, Shauna, Jeff, the Craven family, especially Brooke and Lady Hendrick, Margarita, Rosanna, the Callister family, especially Baby Thomas, Ada and Tony, Lowell, Richard, Jane, David and Heather. And we remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, remembering especially the blessed Virgin Mary and St. George, beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our mistakes. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, for the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labour and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 
Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb, which was offered for us, and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again hear us O merciful father we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. I do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always in our mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, 
that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may have more God in him, and he in us. So
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.